Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James Grounded Family Bible Study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly, I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son, Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Exodus 24. And he said unto Moses, Come up unto the Lord, thou, and Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu. Now let's run over to Leviticus chapter 10 and verse 1. Let's open it. Leviticus 10.1. You can see the position of some, some of these people. All have sinned. I don't care where you've been, what you've done, and they have it by you. The sons of Aaron took either of them his censer, and put fire therein, and put incense thereof, and offered strange fire before the Lord, which he commanded them not. And there went out fire from the Lord, and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. Come up unto the Lord, thou, Aaron, Nahab, and Abihu. They don't last long. And they stood in the presence of the Lord. And they fell. They burned. They disobeyed God. And whether you're a pastor, deacon, or whatever you are, if you're high office of the church, you're capable of falling too. And seventy of the elders of Israel, and worship ye afar off. You can't come all the way up. Only Moses can. And Moses alone shall come near the Lord, but they shall not come nigh. Neither shall the people go up with him. Now here, the people are down at the bottom. The elders, Aaron, Nahab, and Bihu are allowed to go further up. And only Moses is allowed to go all the way up. See, there's a position. There's a place. There are bounds by people. We got to learn where our bounds are in our life and not to cross them. And Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the judgments. That's what we just read in the last chapter. Those are their judgments. And all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words which the Lord has said, we will do. That's a pretty bold statement by the Jews. And this is something that they will always speak out hastily. They should be crying out for mercy and grace. And there are more laws coming. And Moses wrote all the words of the Lord. So now he puts it in writing. What we do, what 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 did Moses just write? This is what we just read, the last few chapters. Now Moses put that in writing. Before it, he he tells the people, all right, you guys are gonna do it all. I'm gonna make sure you're gonna be hold to your words. I'm writing it down. Now it will be in writing. And rose up early in the morning and build, builded an altar under the hill and twelve pillars according to the twelve tribes of Israel. And he sent young men of the children of Israel which offered burnt offerings 
and sacrifice peace offerings of oxen unto the Lord. And Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins. Last time they did this, they're coming out of Egypt. And half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. I don't know if he uses the his, but you know, boom, boom, boom. We're making a covenant, we're making a pact, we're making an oath. Now notice it says sprinkled blood. And there are religions out there that will sprinkle water. You got the wrong sprinkling. Baptism with water is immersion. You want to sprinkle anybody, you're supposed to use blood. But who would want to use blood? Yeah. And he took the book of the covenant. What we've read so far. And what we're reading right now. Here it is. It's written down what God told him. And this is what we'll do. And read in the audience of the people. Again. He just reread what we've been studying the last few nights. Verily, verily. He's already told them what the testimony and judgments are. He wrote them down. Then he reads them back to the people. Maybe give them a little second chance, maybe. And they said, All that the Lord has said we will do and be obedient. Do you believe what these people are saying about the law? Where today we know you can... Oh, wait a minute. Let's go to James chapter 2, verse 10. Now, we got to go all the way to the New Testament about this one. And this is important to what they say. James 2, 10. A born-again Bible-believing Christian knowing what the Scriptures are, both Old and New Testament. James, right into the children of Israel about the law there's no shadow of a doubt in james 2 10 as we write this note all that we will do okay ready for whosoever shall keep the whole law and they haven't been given the whole law yet wait to leviticus wait to deuteronomy when when moses gives them the law by god when they get into the land the law of Leviticus is, is the law as they travel. Deuteronomy is when they finally get into the land. James 2.10 Whosoever shall keep the whole law, everything that God says we will do. That sounds good. And yet offend in one point, one particular point of the law. He is guilty of all. And remember the other night when, we, when I took you to Joshua, the last chapter, and Joshua says, you know, we're going to worship God. Yeah, we'll worship God. We'll get rid of those idols. Thou shalt have no idols. We've already read that. That's already been written down. And they still carry their knick-knack paddywhacks around their neck. But all we shall do. No, you're not. No, you haven't. Do you know what's coming up uh what was it, 33, something like that? You know what's coming up in Exodus, what chapter is that? 32, I believe it, yeah. 32, I think it is. 32. You know what's coming up in eight chapters? They're going to make an idol, they're going to worship it, and they're going to have a great fellowship with that and play. And wait to see what God's reaction is to Israel from doing that. All that we will do. Uh, graven images. You, chapter 32, you, you ruined that. You shall have no other gods before me. Chapter 32, you ruined that. Aaron. Thou shalt not bear a false report. Well, I threw in this golden poing. And out came this calf, Moses. Liar. And you know what you got to say when you come to the law is, I can't do it. And when we, when Paul writes to us, he says that law would show us that we are sinners and we cannot be perfect. So, we will do and be obedient. 
There's no way to. James 2.10. And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people. Sprinkled it on the, not the water, blood. And said, Behold the blood of the covenant. It's under the blood, not water. Those people that say they're saved by water baptism, by their whoever in their church sprinkles them. I've seen a priest use one of those Miss Carol squeeze bottles they do for the women's hair. It was comical. You got the wrong substance. If you want to do what the Bible tells you to do, you got to use blood of oxen. And you're making a covenant to put yourself under the law. Did you see that? So water baptism is not a means for you to be saved to go to heaven. It's a kind of imitation of, I want to be put under the law. And a lot of those churches that do the water sprinkling will put you under the law. Catholic Church. You got to do this. You got to do that. You got to do this. You can't do that. You got to do this. You can't be this. You can't do that. Blah, 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 blah. But it's too yucky to use blood. And said, Behold the blood of the covenant. Last time they had the blood was over the doorposts as they came out of Egypt. So this typifies the Lord Jesus Christ's bloody atonement, the Lamb of God, to take away the sin in the world. Which the Lord has made with you concerning all these words. And you know how Jesus Christ fulfilled this? He fulfilled the law 100% and his blood took care of our sins. Where I can. Then went up Moses, and Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel. And they saw the God of Israel. God's a spirit. It's got to be wrong. Let's go to chapter 3320. Now, I don't know if this is the complete answer, 3320, but it is an answer. 3320. The Bible says, and he said, God said to Moses, Thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and die, I mean, excuse me, and live. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me, thou shalt stand upon a rock. Get that, get that reference there, rock. And it shall come to pass, while my glory passes by, I will put thee in the cliff of the rock. And will cover thee with my hand while I pass by. I will take away my hand, and thou shalt see my back parts. But my face shall thou not see. So over here, the Bible records that Moses, Aaron, Nahab, Abihu, and the seventy elders saw God. But they did not see his face. You can't see God's face. Never have a man ever saw God's face. Except I would assume Adam and Eve before the fall. Maybe after the fall of Genesis 3. And then those that looked upon the face of Jesus Christ. I think it says uh, Isaiah or Ezekiel has saw God. I believe it's Ezekiel. What are you going to do with that? And they saw God of Israel, Jehovah. And there was under his feet, as it were, a paid work of sapphire stone. That's a red or blue. Mostly red, it does come in blue. As it were the body of heaven in his clearness. The paid worker is that God. Uh, if it's God, it, it was like kind of like a gold image. It wasn't a body shape. And that would match that God's a spirit. They saw some kind of spirit of God. 
But the Bible says they saw God. And yet Jesus said, no man has seen God at any time. So they probably seen Jesus Christ. And upon the nobles, as the, as the elders of the children of Israel, had laid not his hand, also they saw God and did eat and drink. All right, now let's get the point here. Moses, as we're going to read, Moses is going to tell Aaron, get down there. Go back. I got work to do with God. Go back down to the people. Now let's get this. They saw God. They're eating and drinking with God. How does that happen? I cannot tell. I don't know. But the Bible says they saw God. And in chapter 32, Aaron is going to make another God. And he's going to sit down and eat and drink with them and party. Aaron's right there. He saw God. And the people go, well, make us gods. And then he'll say, these are the gods. The people say, these are the gods that made that brought us out of Egypt. Aaron saw God. And yet, 32 still happens. The only ones that are left, and Joshua is not mentioned here, but he's here. Moses and Joshua are the only ones that are going to remain. And Joshua stays while Moses goes up. Let's read on. And the Lord said unto Moses, Come up to me into the mount and be there. And I will give thee the tables of stone. They haven't been yet. And a law. And a law. And a law. And more to what we just read already. What we read already in the last three or four chapters are judgments. But I'm going to give you the law. And all that the Lord says we will do, ooh, you're getting in thick now. Let's wait till Leviticus is written. And commandments, which I have written that thou mayest teach them. God, see, God's already written it. Moses is going to go up and God is going to give it to him. Moses rose up, his minister Joshua. And Moses went up to the Mount of God. And he said unto the elders, that's the 70 elders, Tarry here for us, me and Joshua, until we come again unto you. They can't wait in 23. Hurry. We don't know what happened to him. And behold, Aaron and her are with you. If any man have any matters to do, let them come on to them. Oh yeah, they come on to Aaron all right. And Aaron produces the calf. And Moses went up into the mount. And a cloud covered the mount. Now as a family, as we read our Bible, that looks very familiar. Because here's Peter, James, and John on the mount with Moses and Elijah and Jesus. And a, and a cloud showed up and spoke. There it is. That moment those three disciples, instead of being asleep, should have... We read this somewhere. They should have tapped Moses or Elijah on the shoulder and said, Excuse me, somewhere in the Old Testament... This has happened. Can you tell me which of you wrote this? And Moses would have said, it was me and Jehovah. And guess who? Guess who? Of all people to be here with Moses as he goes up this mountain with his cloud. Guess who else is there? Joshua. Jehovah saves. Look at that. This is the second time that Jehovah saves and Moses has been on a mountain with a cloud. The second time for us that's reading the Bible completely. First time here. It's going to happen again. Only thing is not going to be Joshua. It's going to be Jesus. And it would not have spooked Moses that here's this cloud. I'm on Elijah. What's this cloud doing? Never mind the disciples. They were asleep. And Moses probably going, Elijah, this has happened before. It's God. 
Matthew 17, 5. Happened again. And the glory of the Lord abode upon Mount Sinai. So you see why some people think that that Mount of Transfiguration is It may be. It, I would say 95%. It's not named in the Gospels. And a, the cloud covered it six days. And the seventh, he called... All right, this is interesting. The cloud bowled six days, but on the seventh day, the cloud did something. You want to teach that to the Pharisees in the cornfields? You want to teach that to the Pharisees when stretch out thy hand? This is the day that God's working, the seventh day. The seventh day he called Moses out of the midst of the cloud. I think if you run those references, in the, I think it's the seventh day they go up in Mount Trent. I think it is. And the sight of the glory of the Lord was like devouring fire. Our God's a consuming fire. If there's one thing that all the people in the Old Testament that you can say about Moses, and only Moses, maybe Ezekiel, but... It was the sixth day. I don't, like I said, it was Ezekiel that recorded to see God. I don't re ever record Ezekiel having his face shining. Moses saw God. And which would tell you, okay, Noah saw God when, when he was told that the earth is in violence and build this ark, but he did not ever see like Moses saw. He called Moses out of the midst of the cloud. And the sight of the glory of the Lord was like the devouring fire. So if you don't see God on God's terms, you're going to go into a fire. On the top of the mount, in the eyes of the children of Israel. They're seeing his mount. And Moses went into the midst of the cloud and got him up unto the mount. And Moses was in the mount forty days and forty nights. And Aaron's given the charge, go to the people. They got anything to do, anything, any, you, you, you're in charge of them. Next way up is the seventy elders. Next way up is Joshua. Next way up. It's Moses and God. Just go back over here to 23. Exodus 23. And Exodus 23. Exodus 23. Aaron's down with the people. Making that cow. So let's uh, verse number... Thirty-two. Thirty-two. That's why I'm looking at the thing like I can't find one before. Thirty-two. I did it back. Thirty-two. Mo Aaron and the people are on the ground. So in verse seven, the Lord said to Moses, "Go get thee down, for thy people which thou bringest out of the land of Egypt, they're corrupting themselves." All right. So Moses is on top of the mountain speaking with God. And verse number 15. Moses is coming down. And Moses turned and went down from the mount. And the two tables of testimony were in his hand. The tables were written on both sides. On this side and blah, 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 blah. And when Joshua heard the noise of the people. So here comes Moses. Now he's up to Joshua. The noise of the people. And Joshua's like, I hear something down there. And Moses already has an idea. God said they corrupted themselves. And Moses tells to Joshua, you know, I don't think this is they're being attacked. It's not what God told me. And then they both go down together. And I want they pick up the elders. And by the time they get down to the mountain, there's the trouble. There's Aaron. Aaron's already gone down. Now here comes Moses and here comes Joshua. 
again, after Aaron, we know Aaron, after Aaron, the Bible has recorded, however it happened, he saw God, and yet he still said that that golden calf was, and I don't think God's a golden calf. So you got to read the scripture with scriptures, what Aaron did. Aaron did not tell the children of Israel exactly what God looked like. He made it up. 